So, hey guys, Tomer here and welcome to a video. Now, this video is not just me reading an article. It's remember Keith Stewart, remember our fellow. But yeah, it's not just me reading an article. I'm going to be talking about these people completely. I'm going to be I'm going to be tearing some social justice assholes right here. I'm not saying Keith is a social justice warrior. He does so some bias towards that side, but I would not I would not label him as such. I also think that he's not dumb enough to say the things he said in this fucking article because I read it beforehand. See, I for once, for once I fucking researched. Look at the tabs. Look at the fucking tabs that I have here. There is a lot of content. So let's get through this a bit quickly, shall we? This is from the 2nd of December, so it's not that recent. But yeah, this is again the whole, uh, not the Play Asia stuff. It's more the Dead or Alive Extreme Bo Beach Volleyball 3. So, let's read this. Ten years ago, Japanese video game publisher Tecmo had a brilliant money-spinning idea. It decided to take the female characters from its successful fighting game series Dead or Alive and put them into a, a beach volleyball si simulation set on a tropical island. There would be a lot of bikinis and thanks to the cutting edge graphics engine, a lot of bounce physics. Terra Live Extreme Beach Volleyball sold hundreds of thousands of copies. A new um, gaming franchise was born. Fair enough. But now the same franchise is in trouble, kind of. In November, a community moderator on the Terra Live Facebook page was answering questions about the possibility of a Western release for Terra Live Extreme 3. Let's look at that. Any word of bringing the upcoming Extreme 3 game to US and EU regions or no? We do not bring De Dead or Alive Extreme 3 to the West and won't have any plan change in the future. Thank you for asking. Alright, well what's the reason for not bringing it to the West? Do you know many issues happening in video game industry with regard to how to treat female in video game industry. We do not want to talk those things here, but certainly we have gone through in last year or two to come to our decision. Thank you. And let me read you this. I understand, but I always thought Europe was more tolerant with these topics. I mean, I won't care if this game was made for adult or in download only. I'd still buy it. I'm old enough, Senran Kagura even made it to the Western 3DS, even though Nintendo is known for its family friendliness. I always thought Europe was more tolerant with these topics, and you were fucking right, but my good friend Sven, we are not getting our fucking games because of a sh bunch of stupid motherfuckers in America. Thank them, not me. Well, fair enough. Now we've looked at that, let's continue with the article, shall we? In November, a community moderator on the Dead or Alive Facebook page was answering questions about the possibility of a Western release. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, do you know? Yeah, it says that. Okay. In other words, it seemed to some that to Koi Tecmo's decision not to release the game in the West was due to fears of a feminist backlash, which, as the fucking comment said, which, as the comment said, they have went through that in the last year or two to come to their decision. No matter how much you make this... Alright, these are other tabs. Ignore them for now. We're gonna come back to them. But the thing is, no matter how much you try to make this as not the case, you cannot deny they got that feminist backlash from two, two years ago, one year ago. There is a lot of logical reasons, there are lots of logical reasons to really just think that you know this is their this is how they came to their decision they're just they're committing economic seppuku they fucking are they're committing they really are committing economic seppuku I'll show you what I mean later but let's move on for now this seemed to be confirmed later when a moderator on Kwai Tecmo's Europe's Twitter account added support for the statement thank you for doing some the relatively Good journalism, Keith. Thank you. Kudos to the TN's CM for being honest. For being honest. L let me highlight this. Let me fucking highlight this. What does this tell you? You know what that tells me? 
That tells me Kwai Tecmo as a fucking whore is just scared shitless to say this. And one employee steps up and fucking says this, and the rest fucking cheer him on. Or at least the ones in Europe, that is. Or the guy who handles the account. Oh, shit. What? Oh, uh, no. Don't know the map. But if you really wanted, you can import EN version, play Asia. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Unsurprisingly, the minor revelation was leapt on both by fans of the series and by libertarian culture critic, cultural cl critics. Not just libertarians. But pretty much anybody who's anti-social justice. Conservatives could be anti-social justice. I mean, liberals could be anti-social justice. Everybody could be anti-social justice. But you are right as in, you know, libertarian as in political spectrum. You see, there is authoritarian up. Uh, to the north, there is authoritarian. You know, the, the upper part of the political compass is authoritarian. The lower part is libertarian. And then you have, you know, the right being the right and the left being the left. You can be left libertarian, right libertarian. You can be left authoritarian, right authoritarian. Social justice warriors are uh, left authoritarian and I am left libertarian so uh, obviously I oppose them see this is not a matter of uh, left versus right this is more a matter of authoritarian versus libertarian although there are there there are some authoritarian right-wingers who do actually who are against the the uh, who are against this uh, you know the, the left the authoritarian leftists but I consider that kind of I consider these types of people kind of false people because I doubt they really care I think I think they care because it's like censorship of uh, something they don't wish to be censored but if it's something that they want to see censored they will probably defend it I, I honestly have no faith in uh, authoritarians I don't like them but yeah who we'll quickly blame social justice warriors I, I like how I like how it's in quotation marks as if this is some some fucking libertarian boogeyman instead of you know an actual fucking threat they, they are a fucking threat for inhibiting freedom of speech and bikini wear. But of course, of course it is. Thanks to their innocent hand wringing over sexism in the games industry. That's what's going on. You're fairly representing the situation. My only complaint is that they're not raging against sexism. They're, they're not raging against sexism. They're raging against perceived sexism that nobody else outside their group thinks is, is sexism. Internet forums and gaming subreddits uh, enthusiastically linked the announcement with Nintendo's recent decision to change some of the skimpy outfits in Wii U titles Xenoblade Chronicles X and Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater for Western release. I doubt it was enthusiastically. We're talking about people who wanted to see these things in their fucking games. So I doubt it was enthusiastically. See, w when we don't get something we want, we are not happy. The, I, I don't know about you, but I'm not happy when I don't get something I don't want. Uh, when I don't get something I want. Sorry. For Western release. To some, it was a, a sure sign that authoritarian leftists were imposing their killjoy values on the industry. I am glad. I am glad you highlighted the exact fucking issue here. This is exactly what's going on. I talked about it a little bit. This is exactly what's going on. Now, um, the man over here is trying to make it, oh, this is authoritarian leftists, you know, this is a fucking boogeyman or some shit. He, he's kind of, he's kind of portraying it as such when it isn't, but it does not matter. It does not fucking matter. I don't care in what tone he puts that here, it's the fucking truth, and I'm glad he put that there. I am fucking glad. But of course, things aren't quite that simple. For a start, Japanese publishers have always edited explicit video game content for Western audiences. But back then, but for fuck's sake, man, back then they were getting fucking stuff from fucking the fucking religious right. They, now they're getting shit from fucking feminists. That's the fucking issue here. Oh, come on, fuck off, computer. Uh, that's the fucking issue. See, I dislike both sides. I, I dislike both the religious uh, motherfuckers. I, I dislike both the religious uh, right and the uh, authoritarian left. I do. I fucking do. They're both trying to censor my fucking games and I won't have that. Only well, here's my problem. Every gamer, back in the day, every gamer would be against the uh, religious right. Now, however, 
Not all gamers are against the uh, social justice crowd. There are some gamers who have embraced it. There are some gamers who became the fucking carpet these people walk on. Jesus Christ, man. Like, th th that takes a specific type of, like, fucking self-hating to achieve that. But yeah, anyways. The problem here is, it's not that this is not something new. The problem is that this still happens. We don't want that. We don't fucking want that. Back in 1991, the original version of Final Fantasy uh, IV featured a semi-naked dancer who was fully clothed for the US release, while popular Mega Drive brawlers such as Streets of Rage 3 and Mystic Defender saw scantily clad female characters dressed more modestly in Western version. This is not a new phenomenon. It shouldn't be a phenomenon. It doesn't matter if it's new or not, it shouldn't fucking be. And just when I thought, ju just when the religious right was fucking dying off from old age, just when I thought, finally, I can play my fucking games without a bunch of motherfuckers screaming at me. No, these people had to come in. These motherfuckers had to step in that exact fucking moment. I cannot. See, see, great. You know, yeah, I always wanted to argue with fucking idiots on the internet. I always fucking wanted that. You discovered exactly what I fucking want to do in life. To waste my time arguing with fucking idiots who threaten, the, who threaten me by essentially not... Um, by essentially stopping me from getting my fucking games here. And you're gonna say, well, you know, you can still import from PlayAsia. I'm not a rich motherfucker. This game, if they released it here, they would have released like 40 euros. PlayAsia has that like 50... Uh, has that like... 55 euros because they need to make money too, don't they? I mean, it's pro it's probably the price difference is probably less than the one I just said. It's kind of exaggerated, but the problem is that it really makes a difference. Even five fucking euros make a difference on whether I can buy a game or not. They really do. I'm not from a rich fucking country. I'm from a bankrupt nation in southern Europe. I cannot afford to spend more money than you know I would have otherwise. So yeah, you're not taking my fucking games away. You're just making really fucking hard for me to get my games. Thank you. I always wanted to not be able to get my games. I always wanted to be sitting here arguing with stupid motherfuckers on the internet. People who actually do, do threaten me in some way because I don't get my fucking games. And I can't get them. Because I'm not rich like you. It's also not uh, one pu guided purely by fears of a moral backlash. I'm glad you put the, the purely here, because frankly you're essentially admitting that yeah, it, it kind of might be sort of guided by fears of moral backlash. I think it's completely by fears of, more, of a moral backlash. There is a historic awareness that Western markets aren't as exposed to the mass of anime and manga that heavily inform gaming content in Japan. Are you fucking kidding me? Have you been on the internet for more than two Fucking minutes. You see, th this is the thing. Weeaboos are a thing. And I'm not saying all people who like anime or manga are weeaboos. I'm simply saying they're a thing. They're a fucking thriving community. Just like the community they're a part of, which is the anime and manga community. They're a smaller part of that community. And a more extreme part of that community as well. But that's the thing. Have you not seen the steady growth of these fucking communities? I mean, hell, i watched three fucking channels that have to do with this uh, on, uh, on the internet. Together, if, if you put their fucking subscribers together, you get a number of about one million. If that's not huge, I don't know what is, man. And then you also have to include, you also have to remember that not every person who likes anime and manga is subscribed to those people, right? Some people are not subscribed. You also then have to remember that some people might be subscribed to two of them, that one person might be subscribed to both of them and whatever. But that's just difference in the numbers. It, it might be closer to like 900,000 instead of uh, one, one million. But it's still a large fucking number. And these are primarily Westerners. And that's the thing, these are primarily Westerners. Which comfortably embrace many Seijin or adult uh, subgenres that often seem weird beyond the domestic market. There's always, a, yeah, but there's always a market for these types of things in the West, and it sells pretty well. I mean, do I have to show you the sales of the Alive? Now, this is a poster that I put here as a warning, so I could be a little, you know, so I could be a little ethical 
uh, that uh, these uh, are probably these charts are probably inaccurate. But the thing that's inaccurate about them is that the real numbers are likely higher. That's what's inaccurate about them. Now let's take a look at these numbers, shall we? Come on, load them, load them up. This is gonna be a long fucking video, but yeah, let's take a let's take a look at these numbers. Let's take a good fucking look at these numbers. Well, it loads. We're gonna just continue on with this. Indeed, when we appraise games like Dead or Alive, Extreme Beach Volleyball in the West, we tend to do so beyond the context of Japan's wider otaku culture. Japan doesn't have a wider otaku culture. There are many otakus in Japan, sure, that's true, but otaku is a dirty word. Most people don't like to associate with it in Japan. If you knew shit about Japan, you would know this, man. You, you would know this, Keith. You would. The women in their alive belong in a particular niche. It's the characters themselves that are popular, argues sociologist Cassie Brienza. I have not heard of her. Who has written extensively on manga and anime. That could be true. I'll do some research on her um, when I'm done with this video. There's a good culture around what are considered what are called character goods. Things like Hello Kitty, which become multiplied across different media from comics to action figures. How does Hello Kitty have anything to do with this? It's, it's not the characters that are... See, you might be right. You, you're fucking right that the women are actually... That the characters are popular. It's the reason most people buy these uh, the Dead or Alive Extreme uh, series. But they're not the character goods you are describing, Miss uh, Cassie. There are fetishes around physical types, like girls with big breasts, or a particular clothing or personality types, like the girl next door. There's a fetish around girls who wear glasses, Megan Echo, and blue hair become, became popular after the success of the anime series Neon Gen Genesis Evangelion, an anime series I want to watch, but whatever. <laughs> That's why these video games are made. They cater to particular fans of very specific tropes. People who write academically about this in Japan focus on the way that in otaku culture the symbol is often reiterated outside of any narrative frame. Uh, They're Alive is a good example of that. Unlike, say, the Final Fantasy Adventures, there is no real story. It's just about the characters. That's the appeal. Yeah, the, the characters are the appeal. And the fan service. According to Brienza, this kind of introverted, compartmentalized Sexuality has its roots in the vast sociological changes that have taken place in Japan over the last 30 years. I think it's about how unequal the country has become gender-wise, she says. Women are still expected to quit their jobs when they get married and become full-time homemakers. However, the, con the concept of lifetime employment has broken down and that puts pressure on both men and women. The stereotype of man as sole breadwinner and the woman at home taking care of the kids doesn't work financially. And because the country is so rigid, it just means that the young people don't have serious relationships. They can't make it work. And you know that might be right. I've heard a lot of problems about. Uh, I've heard of the problems that Japan is having. You know that that could be right. I don't know. Oh, by the way, the reason I'm making these pauses is because I'm drinking water. It's fantastic. Uh, see, I, I've really planned this. I even got fucking water for this episode. The effects of this socio-cultural crisis are manifested through pop culture. A popular manga genre for young women, for example, is yaoi, or boys' love, in which young male characters indulge in homosexual relationships. What's appealing about it is that there, is no, there are no women in the story, says Brenza. If you want a, rom a romantic fantasy, the culture is so rigid that a lot of young women cannot imagine a truly equal heterosexual relationship with a romantic partner. I'm kind of doubting this, but it could be true. It, it could be true. The equivalent for young men is the Moe sub genre in anime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not talking about anime. Fuck this shit. There are elements of Moe appeal in the Dead or Alive Extreme series. The characters are overly playful. Eh, yeah. They giggle. Yeah. And pose like kids. I would not agree with that. <laughs> they pose. They don't pose like kids. They pose like fucking women wanting to uh, be suggestive. And the gameplay involves helping to manage their, their friendships and holiday activities, like virtual pets. Indeed, the extremely young appearance of one character, Mary Rose, may be a key factor in Quiet Tecmo's decision not to publish in the West. But she appeared in Dead or Alive 5. It did not stop Dead or Alive 5 from coming to the West. Why would it stop this game from coming to the West? 
I mean, it could be a factor, but I thought it was a key factor. The, the character is already in, is already near the West, and they've they've done this before. They, they've done this before where characters were like 17, and they had to change that to like no answer or something. When you know they had to change the data where it says that the character is 17 to like no answer because of some country's laws or some shit. But yeah. However, the series fits more obviously into the edgy genre, which is etymologically complex but has come to refer to manga, anime, or games with a softcore, playful, um, sexual nature. Yeah, okay, it's fine. That's, that's, a, that's a nice characterization. Is this titles that often make it across the West, usually by special... Yeah, okay. That was like the beat em up, okay, blah, 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 blah. nice, 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 nice. We're all strong genre experience, but the emphasis is on females who tend to shred clothing as battle progresses. Okay. Jerain Devans is head of marketing at uh, P-Cube and helps oversee the company's tra translation of the controversial Shenran Kagura. Feels that these titles are often unfairly critiqued in the West. The pretty girls aspect does play a, a major part, but it's not the entirety of the game. Yeah, he's right. The overall atmosphere isn't about sex, it's more about happiness, core, and cuteness. Oh yeah, absolutely. From the outside looking in, however, it's easy to dismiss these games as titillation. Well, there, there is a, an aspect of titillation, but it's, it, it's true, it's not the main focus. It, it really isn't. If you look at Dead or Alive Extreme uh, 3, I'm not going to pretend that the women aren't the main focus, but it's also the fact that there is, they're in a fantastical paradise environment. The skies are deep blue, it's almost like holiday, it's a breath of fresh air, a move away from the endless man-murder of Call of Duty. Compare a western role-playing uh, game like Fallout, which is bleak and gory, to a JRPG, um, which may have these sexy elements in them, but is as much about love and happiness. They're a welcome alternative to the greedy realism that western games seem to be obsessed with. Eh, yeah. Well, that's a, that's a nice uh, that's a nice summarization of what's going on. That's a nice uh, summarization summary. I don't I don't know how to say that. Uh, so, quite Tecmo's decision not to publish in the West can be read as a continuation of a cultural understanding that mainstream Western audiences see games like Dead or Alive Extreme in a very different way to domestic fans. But there are also commercial realities to think of. Although the original Extreme Beach Volleyball sold well, its successor was a comparative flop, shifting an, un an estimated 150,000 copies in North America and 30,000 in Europe. Funding a Western launch for a third title would be a big risk. Let let's look at these statistics now. Did you not fucking load? Why did you not load? Oh, fucking hell. Alright, stop. No. Damn it. Alright, let's load this again. <sighs> Damn it, my computer is also lagging from uh, the recording. Um, so, date, release history. North America, 0 0.15 million. 0 .0, 0 0.03 million. 0 0.06 million, 0 0.01 million. What's this fucking number? See, remember when I told you that this was a fucking, this was fucking economic seppuku? This is what I fucking meant. This is exactly what I fucking meant. If they are, if they're going through the, if they're going to bother if they're going to fucking bother making a third game, releasing it, not releasing it in the West, is fucking suicide. You cannot actually compensate for the fucking, you know, all, for all the money they probably lost with this game. It's true, this game did not sell well compared to, you know, big titles. It's true, that's fucking true. And uh, as as I said here, um, as I said here, this the the numbers are much uh, are likely much higher because these data are uh, these data is f not uh, complete. I'll, I'll you know I, I think you've read this. I think you had the time the opportunity to read this. If you didn't, here you go. And let's move on now. I I need to be fast about this. Um, shit, why? Oh my god, it's so slow. Alright. So, Koi Tecmo's uh, decision not to publish yeah, yeah, the main, uh, in a very different way. 
The mainstream, yeah, see games. Uh, I, I doubt this. I fucking doubt this. I seriously do. But there are also commercial realities to think of. Although the original Extreme Beach Volleyball sold well, it's successful. Was, yeah, okay, we read this, of course. But yeah, um, releasing it in the West would not be a big risk. Um, exactly. You often know there is an audience for these games, but you can never prove how big it is, says Martin Mathers, a project coordinator at Rising Star, another publisher specializing in cult Japanese titles. The problem is minority audiences are the loudest, so it looks like there is a market, then you take a risk and it turns out there isn't. Alternatively, you may find the audience will wait until the game is discounted. With their Alive Ex Extreme 2, UK sales were just 30,000 copies, but that's not day one, that's lifetime. You have to think about how many copies are sold at uh, the budget price. See, what this guy is not getting here is that, yes, the, the audience is kind of a minority, but they're not a loud minority. The, there is a market. See, there is a market. This guy, they're, they're not such a minority. They're not the minority he claims they are. You know, it's a bigger... It's a bigger community than this guy seems to think it is. And I know this because of uh, how many people I've seen talk about this. How many people I've seen talk about this who have actually played this game. How many people I know who have actually played this game that I've seen, you know, say things about this. There is a market for this sort of stuff. And especially in Europe. Especially in Europe there is a market for this sort of stuff. Now you could say... Well, the data says that um, that Europe did not sell, you know, you, you have to understand that this, this is still a big number. Europe might have, uh, in Europe, the game might have sold less than in Japan or North America, but in Europe it also got the least backlash. You have to remember that. Euro European um, studios and shit. You're not studios, European uh, publications and European and the European public, with the, they, they were not they were not the ones uh, hitting on this on this on these types of games. The the ones who were doing that were the Americans. But yeah, let's move on. The thing is, Japanese studios generally want minimum guarantees. They ask for a hell of a lot of money up front for publishing rights. Then you have packaging and distribution, and the fact that there's a minimum number of discs that a manufacturer will print. Finally, you have the retail cut, and that's after convincing stores that it's a game worth taking. You have all those costs to factor in, then you put it out for uh, 40 pounds. Is, that's pounds, right? I, I, I have, I'm having a fucking... Uh, I don't know, I, I can't remember what that is. I think it's pounds. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, it, it's probably pounds. But the audience only wants to pay uh, 20 pounds. What this really isn't is a freedom of speech issue. So if you don't think it's a freedom of speech issue, Keith, even though some fans are trying to make it one, but it is. It fucking is. You are... It's not really a freedom of speech issue. It's a freedom of expression issue, actually. There are people out there who do not want this game to come to these countries because they think there is a harmful portrayal of women in, these, in this game. However, the, the thing is... They're a loud minority. That's the pro that's the big problem. You're listening to a loud minority, and they're a loud minority in America. And by America, the U.S. of uh, the U.S. of America. No, not anywhere else. No, just in the United States. I'm not getting my fucking game in Europe because of these motherfuckers in the United States. Of course, they're not taking our games away. As I said before, they're just making it fucking impossible for me to get them. Because I'm not a rich motherfucker like them. But alright. Even though some fans are to make it one. A corporation that decides to other content or with no its products for a certain market is making a business decision. Was that business decision influenced by something else, Keith? Do you think that's the case? Because I certainly do. Indeed, Quiet Tecmo later released a statement where it dismissed the Facebook statement as that individual's opinion. You are fucking wrong. You are fucking wrong. They did not. I don't have it in front of me, but I will have it in the description below. Their statement, their statement was, this was the opinion of this individual, but they never actually dismissed it as just this individual's opinion. They just said, this person thinks this. 
That does not mean we don't think this. It's just this person thinks this. They never said we don't think this. They never outright fucking said that. And that was a fucking master stroke of a response. They did not make the situation worse than, you know, it could have become. But they really halted the, uh... They really, ha they really halted the, uh, progression to worse. To the situation was getting worse and worse. They really halted that with that fucking response. And not representative of the company's business strategy. From what I remember, that's not there. That's not there. I, I really don't remember that. Also, don't you think they could have simply gone complete fucking damage control? I, that's what I think happened. They, they probably did. They probably really did. Whatever you think about Dead or Alive, it's not a game that is going to trouble certification boards or censors. What? Even if it provoked fury and condemnation, it really hasn't. Yes, it fucking has. I'll show you some. Uh, I could show you some examples. I could. That would take fucking hours though, actually. So, uh, probably not. Or we might have a part 2 of this video where I will. It, it all depends. It's debatable whether any sort of direct action, such as petitioning retails not to carry the title, would have any effect apart from some free publicity. But it did. We know this. We know that people with like 200,000 subscribers on YouTube were rallying against this fucking play thing. We know that. And we know that they inspired the, the fucking people that watch them to do the same. As it stands, Dead or Alive Extreme 3 will be available worldwide in all its ludicrous objectifying glory via specialist importers. Who want to take some extra money for themselves because, you know, they're importers. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying I can't pay for all that shit. You know, to you it might sound, in 5 euros might sound, in, 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 God damn it, I can speak. 5 euros might so, not seem like such a big um, issue, but they fucking are. For me, they fucking are. Because of the region I live in. Seems quite Tecmo is happy with that for now. Yeah, okay. There's always a chance that no company will organize a digital only the release in the US and Europe if demand is there. But there is demand. The cost involved would be uh, negligible after all. Whatever happens, this whole controversy is just the latest thumb in the cultural rift between Japanese publishers, mainstream global audiences, and niche fan bases. Mainstream global audiences. Nothing about the people that do not buy this fucking game is mainstream exactly. See, that's the thing you don't get. This niche fan base is not as niche as you think it is. And this mainstream global audience isn't as and this mainly mainstream global audience that does not buy this game is not as big as you think it is. They are not. This one's bigger, this one's smaller. where myriad sensibilities, preconceptions, and sociological factors come into play. But of course, in modern online discourse, no one really wants to hear about nuance. nuance. Oh, come the fuck on, man. Are you really gonna say that? Come the fuck on. But yeah, let's move forward. Let's, let's move fucking forward. So, let's go with, to this. The Honeypop developer. Honeypop developers. Probably nothing to them, but I'd give Koi Tecmo one million dollars for the rights to publish Dead or Alive X3 in the US. Let me take the hit. 100% serious. It's an extra million the other guys wouldn't have. Seems like a no-brainer to me. Let them know. I'll give you one million dollars for the rights to publish Dead or Alive X3 in the States. Seriously, a serious offer for whatever it's worth. Fan fucking tastic. I, I really want them to accept this offer. I really fucking want them to, because I I, I love the Honey Pop uh, developers. They're, they're fucking fantastic. But yeah, let's go. Let's go watch this. Let's go watch this. Uh, let's go from here. Let's listen to this. And are upset that them damn feminists are ruining okay. everything. The, the, but the again, I ask, of what are they ruining exactly? What the fuck? Let's play this again. Do I have sound on? I do have sound on. Alright, let's go. And are upset that them damn feminists are ruining everything. But again, I ask, what are they ruining exactly? What are a few debates about sexism going to ruin? Are they going to take away your dead or alive beach volleyball massive tit parade? With Did you hear that? 
Let, let's hear that again. No, let's fucking hear that again. Let's hear that again. Let, let's see. Sexism going to ruin. Are they going to take away your dead or alive beach volleyball mass parade? Would that be a loss? Yes, it would be, you fucking cunt. You stupid motherfucker. You fat ass piece of shit. Yes, it fucking would be. Fuck you, Jim, you arrogant piece of shit. You couldn't even admit you were fucking wrong. You couldn't admit you were fucking wrong. You, you were fucking wrong, Jim. You were. You have been proven to be fucking wrong, and yet you still went and said, Oh, it's a corporate decision, it's a corporate decision. Fuck off, Jim. Admit you are fucking wrong. Admit you are fucking wrong. Fucking admit it, man. First comment. Care to revisit your stance on so nobody taking away dead or alive? Fucking liar, piece of shit. The second comment. Look at this. Look at this shit. This is fantastic. Even if they did, which they won't, because so long as the market exists, publishers won't change shit. The <laughs> He says the market exists, and now he's going full fucking damage control mode, and he's saying, well, it didn't sell well enough in this market. A market fucking exists, bitch. What does it didn't sell well enough mean, you fucking stupid motherfucker? God damn it, Jim. See, I hate Jim. You know, people say he's an, ad an advocate of the consumer. Yeah, advocate of the consumer, my fucking ass. Listen to this shit. Listen to this shit. Come on. Fucking hell, man. <laughs> fucking hell. Oh, man. I feel fucking fantastic now. Oh, and... Oh, my God. The cherry on top. What happens when social justice warriors get a taste of their own fucking medicine? Cartoon Network defends the decision to censor same-sex romance in Steven Universe. So that's apparently some US cartoon. I don't understand. Something like that. It emerged this week that the new network had made changes to an episode of the American animated series for its broadcast in the UK. All right. Original. This one. Let's see. All right. Final petition calling for the network to reconsider their decision. All right, it's more comfortable for kids and their parents. We have one going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be sure that as a channel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Petition set up by anime fans is. Is it below? Anime fans. Anime fans. This. Anime. This and anime. This and anime. This is not anime. What the fuck are you talking about? You have no idea what anime is. Let's see. See, this is what happens. This is what fucking happens. L read this shit. Read this shit on your own. This is what fucking happens. Oh no, you know what? I'm gonna go from the top of the page to the bottom and I'm gonna let you read this. Yeah, okay. Here, it starts here. Read this. Fucking read this. You can stop and read this. This is what happens when these people get censored. When shit they fucking like gets censored. And frankly, I feel fantastic. Oh my god. Irony. Not irony. What the fuck am I talking about? It's not irony. Well, it is irony to some degree, you know. It kinda is very ironic. But at the same time, the, the best part about this is revenge. Oh, revenge, my old love. You have the best perfume ever. You smell so fantastic. Oh, yes, the smell of revenge. 
The smell of you not getting shit you want when I get shit I want. Fan fucking tastic. Oh, fantastic. See, normally, normally, I would campaign against this change. Normally, I would be against this change. <laughs> but if you're not willing to give me my fucking booby game, why should I give you your fucking two-second lesbian kiss? I don't see a reason. This is the path you have brought us on. Where everything you like and I like gets... Where everything you like and I like gets censored. This is what you chose. Not me. You. You have brought this situation upon yourselves. You motherfuckers. Oh, and something I did not cover. That's important to notice. What Jim is doing now, where he, with his response to, with his response to, you know, Dead or Alive being taken away, which was fucking bullshit. It's like, oh, it's a corporate stench and whatever. He is Apologia. Here's the wiki definition. You should read it. Um, so I'm going to go through this post over here to say, to essentially give you, um, to essentially show you which parts of Apologia this is. One, denial. Simple denial or shifting the blame. Denial it is. He did deny that the this was uh that uh you know the feminists are taking our games away when it's fucking blatantly obvious. Evasion of responsibility. Of course he fucking did that because he associates with these people. Reduction of offensiveness. Minimization. Of course he fucking did that. Attack accuser. Yes he did that. Corrective action, he did not do that, as far as I'm aware. Mortification, he did not do that. And frankly, mortification is like the best thing. Because it's admitting wrongful behavior, asking for forgiveness and apologizing. It's, it's what you should do in those fucking cases. This is what I wanted him to do. This, this is one of the few things he did not do out of this fucking list. This does not really have anything that I could talk about, but yeah, Apologia. If you want Jim, uh, Jim's uh, statements on this, I will have them in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this fucking episode where I, where I completely wrecked those motherfuckers, or at least I hope I did, specifically Jim. I've always wanted to slap Jim in the face from the time I saw this video and uh, his response to what happened with Dead or Alive. He's a fucking arrogant prick. He's an arrogant prick who cannot admit he's fucking wrong. And while he's intelligent, he chooses to shut off that part of his, uh, to shut down that part of his fucking brain because it's not convenient for his ideology and he chooses to follow this ideology. He's the biggest fucking cuck I've ever had the uh, well, I've ever had the disgust to meet on the internet. <sighs> Thankfully, I don't have to hang out with this guy. Honestly, if anybody hangs out with, like, Jim Sterling, I'm fucking sorry with you. I'm fucking sorry for you. I really am. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you can actually get your Dead or Alive uh, games. I won't be able to get them. And it's kind of sad because I was planning to play them with my, uh, I was planning to play them with the guys, you know, my friends, and uh, a girl I really like who is really into the, uh, who's into a lot of like the fan services type of stuff. She's really into the like the suggestive stuff, and uh, yeah, I was hoping I could spend time with uh, the guys, you know, we could like, I could buy this and you know, I could call them in my birthday and, you know, we could, uh, you know. Get my friend's PS Vita and play this shit. Or maybe like, well, not my birthday with my friend's PS Vita, but you know. Maybe we could like play this on somebody else's birthday. Maybe. Maybe we could. But yeah. I mean, 
technically we could play this with my friends PS Vita, so... But there is no reason, I had not, I had not exactly planned this, thing is... There is no fucking reason for me to even consider this anymore, because frankly I ain't getting this fucking game, I can't. I can't have it shipped, I can't pay for it, oh my god, I really cannot. I have to wait to get some more money, and yeah. If for those of you out there who can get it, go for it. Uh, no, I guess all I can do is like play fucking Smash Bros. Bro with my friends. Actually, I can't, do, I can't even do that because my parents took my TV because their TV was got fucking wrecked. So they took my TV and they have not replaced the old one, the old one they had. So they haven't given me my TV back, and I want my TV because I can't play my fucking Smash Bros. now. But anyways. As I said, just enjoy your fucking game, enjoy it honestly, from the bottom of my heart, and have a great evening. Thank you so much for watching this nice episode of tearing a new fucking asshole to these fucking people. There will be more of those coming up, and with the same amount of research and actual, you know, actual uh, getting ready and shit. So yeah, thank you so much for watching.